Welcome back to Retro Rewire. My name is JJ. We are at Yoshikawa in Saitama, Japan in the hunt. And here we are at the hard off. And we're going to start things off right outside. Look at this. We have a Super Famicom and a PS1. And these would make for some pretty good restoration projects. And both of them are coming in at 3,000 yen. And I believe this PS1 is a 3,000 series. But pretty cool to see that. And it doesn't stop there. Look at this one. We have a PSP. I believe this is a 1000 model. And this one has been here for quite some time, as you can see by the by all the dirt. And then we have this beauty here for the Super Famicom. Now, this can accommodate, I believe, two consoles, some controllers, and a number of games. And I do like this little uh, emblem here of uh, Mario and Yoshi. Here's the little uh, drawers. And I recently picked up something similar to this, which I will show off in the next episode so definitely stay tuned but anyhow let's hit up some end caps and this place had some pretty um i want to say some pretty good end caps as you will see here in the upcoming footage that we're going to see and this little peripheral here for the ps1 is definitely handy and here we have um, an end cap featuring some more um, newer releases some modern releases and then we have the wii era stuff and then these are, we got some psp games with these valkyria chronicle games are pretty good but this is the end cap that I'm referring to this thing was a thing of beauty actually and in fact the eagle eye viewers right here look at this we got Dracula X for the Saturn for 15,000 yen now I hate to say it but that's not too bad of a deal especially with you know how with the things that are, how they're going nowadays especially with the everything retro but here we have some Neo Geo CD titles we have World Heroes we got the King of Monsters 2 for 6,000 yen. A lot of these are coming in at 6,000 yen, actually. And then we have Part 2 coming in at 4,000 yen. This is one that I would like to get, but I want to get it on the AES. And what do we have here? KOF 97. But I'm still thinking about that uh, that Dracula X for the Saturn. How it's just kind of sitting there, you know, just waiting. Usually something like that is behind the glass. So that was definitely a nice surprise. And then here we have... I have no idea what this is. What is this? Uh, Jungle Park... Saturn Island. It's always nice to see these little quirky, obscure games. Here we have uh, King the Spirits. Now, this was high velocity racing in North America, and that is a great game. Pretty good. Uh, this one by Aski, not really sure what that is. And then we have Gege no Kitaro for 1000 yen. Haven't played this one. Doesn't really catch my interest, honestly. But then we have Rockman 8 for 4500. That cover has seen better days, but the backside is pretty good. And that one's another one that I'm surprised is not in the uh, behind the glass. Here we have some Sega Ages goodness. We got Daytona USA for 500 yen. And then this next one. Um, I definitely picked this one up. Look at this. We have Darius Gaiden. And then look at that. It comes with the OB card. You, you just have to pay real uh, close attention there. And sometimes you'll uh, get a glimpse of whether it includes the OB card or not. Here's one that, we, that I haven't seen before. This is for the PC Engine, a shooter. And it looks pretty cool. And that one's coming in at 15,000 yen. And then here we have Ranma 1 half. Um, a decent selection, honestly, of like PC Engine uh, titles there, both for the ROM ROM as well as the Q card variety. Here we're going to uh, run into a few of the, uh, what is this, Ballast, the Ballast games. And they had quite a bit of them. And usually at other places, you know, something like this would again be behind the glass. So already this end cap is proven proving itself worthy now whether you agree with the prices or not you know that's going to be always up in the air but it, you know in today's day and age you know it's it's a uh, you're not going to get a deal i guess a good deal every time but still nice to see this stock that's pretty much what i'm getting at it's always nice to see some good stock and then we have some roroni kenshin here this is a 3d fighter haven't seen this one before but look at that 300 yen and i kind of regret not picking that one up but the reason why I didn't is because of that old Obi card curse. Gotta have that. And here's another Kenshin game. And this one seems to have like 2D fighting action going on. And for the same price. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. I used to watch that on, uh, I believe it was Toonami. And then we have the Director's Cut of Biohazard for 500 yen. That's definitely the lowest I've seen it in a long time. Here we have Driver for the PS1 for 2,000 500 yen. I've never played this one, but I am uh, aware of it. And then we have Jay's Racing or JS Racing. This one looked pretty good. And I kind of wish I would have bought this one just because of uh, I do like these PS1 racing games. We got King of Bowling 2. And then we have, uh, the, what is this? The Misadventures of Tron Bond for 3,500 3, yen. I have the PS1 digital release uh, that I got off of PSN a few years ago. But then we have Astronaka. 
Um, here we have Dance Dance uh, Fourth Mix, some Ridge Racer Type 4, and I'm kind of pulling them out in uh, reverse here, which is a little bit confusing. But here we have uh, Vigilante 8 for 800 yen. I have Second Defense on the Dreamcast, and I actually have this one on the PS1. And then we have Ankh for 2000 yen. What the heck is this one about? Look at that. I mean, obviously Egyptian, but the PS1's library is just so, uh, so uh, diverse and very impressive. I definitely want to get this uh, volume two, but I want it complete in a little bit better condition. I ended up picking up this one, Biohazard, the DualShock version. I took a risk. Unfortunately, no Obi, but oh well. Uh, that was one that I've been wanting for quite some time for the old Biohazard collection. And then here, we're just going to keep making our way through the PS1. A lot of uh, interesting titles like this. Look at this. Growth of Devolution, God Pure. Never heard of that title. Have no idea what it could be about. But a, a little bit, of, uh, I guess it's interesting. And then here's Kingsfield. Kingsfield is another one that I haven't played, but an early From Software game. And then here we have the Puzzle Bobble games. We had a 3DX and then Part 2. And then Clock, uh, Clock Tower 2. Now this one does have English uh, voice acting. Then we have Hermie Hopperhead for 2,000 yen. I do like that cover. We got Toe Ball number 2. I have the first one and that's a pretty good game. And then what is that? Puyo Puyo, I believe. And then just some more random games here. Ark the Lad and Monster Game with Casino. Uh, Street Fighter Zero 2. The Saturn version is definitely better, but the cover here is definitely uh, is, is more awesome on the PS1. And then some North American titles. Look at this. Some uh, extreme sports stuff. And look at the Razor Freestyle Scooter. Those things are definitely popular way back in the day. Uh, what else do we have here? Just some more random titles. And here we have Jumping Flash 2. Now, this one does include Part 1 and Part 2, so that one is definitely worth it. And then this one. I've seen this one off uh, quite a bit, actually, and uh, that one seems pretty interesting. We have uh, the Choma or the Makaimura Collection here, Capcom Generation 2. And this one is also on the Super Famicom, and this is kind of where like you create your own shooter. And I believe it also has like a, a shooting game in there as well that's already made. And here we have uh, Final Fantasy VI. That's a pretty cool cover. What else do we have here? Just some more random games. Uh, what is this? Azure Dreams. I wonder, did this one get a North American release? I believe it did. And this one. Oh, look at this tease. I've been wanting this game for... In fact, let's do a double take. I've been wanting this game for so long, this Lomax business. 6,000 yen, but no manual. I'm too weak. I just couldn't do it. But believe me... That's all that I could think of. Uh, once I saw that game, it was definitely on my mind. And part of me kind of regrets not picking it up, but without that manual, it's just a, it's just a no-can-do. But here we have Armored Core. This one looks pretty good. And that BX2. Uh, I have the original release, and I don't really like it. I'm not really sure what this is about, but it could be like a survival horror game. And then we have Breath of Fire 4, another one that I picked off of PSN years ago. Ah, oh, Lomax, maybe one day. But here, PlayStation 2 titles. We have some Pro Wrestling All-Star 3. Um, and there was, a, there was a pretty good selection of uh, PlayStation 2 titles as well. I don't really know much about these ones, which are, I believe, visual novels, but they had a few of them kind of back-to-back. -back. But there were some pretty good ones like this, Mushihime-sama, The Cave Shooter. This is a great game, and it's a pretty good conversion on the, P on the PS2. And then we have uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 for 3,000 yen. That's another good one. What else do we have here? And then we have this, this one. This is another one that was on my mind. Panzer Dragoon for 3,000 yen for the PlayStation 2. I almost got this, but I have it on the Sega Saturn. And I also have it on, you know, it's a part of the Orta. Uh, Panzer Dra Dra Dragoon Orta for the Xbox. And that's the only reason I put it back. But it was also one that, that had me thinking. We had Decathlete there. And then we have Virtual on Cyber Trooper for 4,000 yen. I had no idea that this was a, a Sega Ages release, but this is another one that was getting me to think a little bit. And then uh, we have the Gradius uh, 3 and 4 uh, compilation disc. We have uh, King of Fighters Orochi Saga. What else do we have here? Just some more random... Uh, what is this? Another wrestling game. Look at that. And then Tecmo Hit Parade for 10,000 yen. This is a, a, another one that should probably be behind the glass. And we have Big 3 Zone 2. We're making our way up to the Xbox titles. We got Project Silphied. 
for 2500 some Dark Souls action there, and then we have Instant Brain for the Xbox 360. Now this one looks like it's a little bit um, adult themed, judging by those screenshots there. And then we have this little thingy here. I think this is just like a promotional thing, just advertising those three games, but I haven't seen something like that before. And then back to Lomax. Oh man, one day I'm going to get that. And I think if you get it with the manual, it's close to like 30,000 uh, 30, yen. And then back to this one. This one is also tempting, but I already have it. But 15,000 yen? Oh man, I paid about like uh, almost uh, 7,000 on top of that price. But anyhow, it's in the collection. It's a done deal. Let's make our way down the game aisle. Here we have some GameCube titles. And I don't really like... I guess this type of merchandising just because it's a uh, you have to spend a little bit more time and then you know filming and doing it with one hand it gets a little bit difficult but nonetheless let's see what they have here we got some biohazard stuff for a thousand yen that one is a little bit um well i, I guess nowadays a thousand yen is, is is pretty normal we got pokemon uh, xd um what else do we have there the eternal darkness in the front and then luigi's mansion there so just a, just an assortment of titles I didn't look through all of it 100%. And then here we have uh, the second release of Super Mario 64. Some more Pokemon. What is that? Pokemon Stadium. Some winning 11-3 maybe that was. And uh, Goemon. That's a great game. And 1,000 yen for a complete in box. That's not too bad. Mario 64 for 800 yen. So pretty good prices there for the 64 stuff. Here we just got some random Mega Drive games just kind of chilling. And then we got some controllers. And some of these controllers were also tempting. Specifically, the Neo Geo CD controllers that we're going to take a look at here in a sec. And we got some Saturn stuff, some uh, Super Famicom. And then here are those Neo Geo controllers. They had two of them, both of them coming in at 4,000 yen each. And yeah, those are definitely tempting. Especially, you know, all things Neo Geo. Uh, we got the ASCII pad here for 3,000 yen. And then we're going to make our way into the loose carts here. And what is this like? Is this like Monty Mole or whatever his name is from uh, the Mario universe? For 500 yen, I had no idea that this little fellow had a game. I wonder if it's any good. Maybe it could be like some kind of puzzle game. But and what did we got Wario Land uh, 3 and 2. And then we got our complete in the box Super Famicom games. And again, I looked through all of this, but nothing that really caught my attention. But they did have this Rockman X2 for 2,000 yen. And normally that's a little bit more, uh, more money. So that's not too bad of a deal there for Rockman 2. We got seven there. And then just making our way through the loose cards. Now the loose card, the one, the one Super Famicom game that I am looking for is Sonic Blast Man. But I want to pay like around 2,000 yen. And eventually one day, hopefully it'll happen. What else do we have here? We got King of Monsters for 800 yen. That's not too bad of a price. And then Lady Stalker for 1,000 yen. Now, I, I wonder if it's in the same universe as Lance Stalker, but here we have Super Metroid. Now, remember, this one does have uh, Japanese and English language options. And then here we have the Yoshi game for the Famicom. Uh, it's like a puzzle type of game. And then making our way into the Game Boy Color games. Look at those boxes. They definitely got a lot larger from uh, the original Game Boy. And then we got some Famicom stuff. And some more loose cards here. That This uh, Super Mario Bros. 3 has seen better days. A little bit sun faded. But there are a few, a few goodness, uh, a, a bit of goodness here. Just kind of chilling. 800 yen here for a Rockman 3. I kind of regret not picking that one up. And this one has a pretty cool cover. Do like the artwork, uh, this art style. And then some Atari games, North American versions. We have Pole Position and Missile Command. Pretty cool to see those. And then we got some, look at this, a sealed memory card and then the, the little case. That's something uh, that's kind of cool. It's kind of neat. And we're going to make our way in the case. But before that, let's see what's up on top. Just a, an assortment of uh, all sorts of little knickknacks, controllers. And I think the more interesting thing were these AC adapters, the SA190, which I believe is for the Mega Drive 2, the 32X, and the Sega C or the Mega CD2. But here we go. Let's see. We got Captain Commando for 5,500 yen. We got some Goemon 2. 
and some Super Famicom titles. Uh, we have the the Blues Brothers. We'll take a closer look at that one, as that one is not something that I'm normally used to seeing. And then we have a uh, Rockman World for two thousand yen. And then we have this uh, Famicom Oni business and Rockman Six. There's two copies there for two thousand. 500 now i don't really like the merchandising in here but look at that rockman 5 4 000 yen that's not too bad of a deal and that box looks pretty good but just kind of getting back to what i was saying the merchandising here is a little bit out of whack as it makes it it makes it not never mind filming but it just kind of makes it hard to shop uh just the way it's just kind of laid out in here but what else do we have here we got some uh pokemon stuff for game boy some super famicom games here and then in the back we got to be really vigilant here, but we have a Super Game Boy 2. There's two of them for 4,000 a piece. So you got to keep your eyes peeled. And then directly above that, there's some Super Famicom games. We have Chomakaimura, Aladdin, and Zelda. So that's what I mean. It's just a little bit hard to see some of this stuff. And then we have R-Type 2 for 2,000. That's going to be the card only. And what else do we have back here? We got uh, Smash Bros for the 64, Mother 1 and 2 for the Game Boy Advance, and Super, what is that, Super Mario Land. And what else, what else catches the attention here? We got some Contra Spirits. I think the Contra Spirits was about uh, 4,000, 4,000 yen, I believe. And then we got some uh, Pokemon action here for 3,000 yen, and the Contra is just to the, to the right of that. And then up front, we got Spider-Man for the Game Boy Advance for 3,000 yen. What else do we have here? We got Final Fight Guy, some Sailor Moon, and then we got Mappy for 3,000 yen. That Mappy on the Namco, that one is... Uh, haven't really seen it lower than that. But then we have uh, Super Castlevania 4 for 2,500. And then back to the Blues Bros for 3,000 yen before sales tax. And then here we go. We got some more. They, they had quite a bit of Game Boy in here, actually, now that I, now that I think about it. And some pretty interesting titles here. We got Hector 87. What do we have? Power Instinct here for the Super Famicom and Terra Enigma by Enix. And then back going, just going back, we have this interesting title by Taito. Look at this. Look at this artwork. I wonder what kind of game this is. I wonder if this is a shooter, it being Taito. Looks kind of looks pretty wicked. Definitely would like to try that one. And then we got some game here with the with the pumpkin on it by Sunsoft. Not really sure what that one is. And then back to Hector 87 by Hudson Soft. Wasn't that the same year that the PC Engine was uh, released in Japan? What do we have here? Uh, runabout there for the PS1. And some Star Wars game. Look at this. Games on cassette tape. And then we have Green Beret there for the Famicom Discs. Uh, we got Metroid for 2,500 for the disc system. And then we have another game to the left of that for the disc system coming in at 3,000 yen. Let's go ahead and make our way into the junk section. And we'll start here at the display case. And yeah, they uh, a lot of, I guess, uh, Nintendo handhelds in here. But we have a DualShock 4 controller coming in at 8,000 yen. And that's a pretty cool design there. Especially, you know, if you're into collecting all those... Uh, limited edition controllers but just a, a little stockpile of handhelds here most of them seem to be ds lights and then there's a game gear now the game gear was also tempting because i definitely want to buy one and just kind of try to repair it coming in at 3,000 yen and that's definitely the lowest that i've seen it doesn't get any power it seems and then just a stack of psps always nice to see psps and then look at this all these ps2 slims that's definitely the most that I've seen in a long while. In a, in a long while, and let's let's pull a few of them out. What do we have here? One's coming in at three thousand yen. It's gonna be for the white one there, and then this one here is four thousand, and then we'll pull out one of the black ones. So pricing is definitely all over depending on what the issue here is. But two thousand five hundred yen, and I'm pretty sure the model number also plays a role in that. But here's just a wider view of what we have here. And then we have a Duo R for 12,000 yen. Look at this bad boy. Definitely a lot higher than I was expecting or than, than what I would like to see, especially considering the condition. Look at this. A little bit dirty there. And then the hue card slot, definitely dirty. But this one could be repaired and it could be restored. Underneath that, we have another PC engine. Now, this CD-ROM-ROM -ROM interface does include the actual uh, CD part of it. It just doesn't have the... Um, 
the actual PC engine. But definitely cool to see both of those, although that Duo R, if only it was 8,000 yen. <laughs> but here we go, we got a Wii U, a couple of Wii U's back there. And then up front and center, we got an OG Xbox One. Look at this bad boy. And this is coming in at 15,000 yen. And I, th I believe this is the first time I actually see one of these uh, guys kind of loose in the junk section. At least in a long while. And then here we have some Wii's, some 360's, and then in the back, a number of PS3 fats. And some of them are pretty, pretty inexpensive. Look at that, 1650, 1000 yen. All sorts of issues, I'm pretty sure. But if you're into, you know, fixing things up, this is the place to come. Look at all these Wii U's. Look at all that. Got some PS1's and some Famicom's, a little bit of everything. Just no, not really many um, Sega consoles in the junk section. And then what's this price coming in at 800 yen? And then look at the now the bins. I really do appreciate this. Everything was in little baggies. Now the the hunter and gatherer in me doesn't really like that too much. But you know when I'm you know when you want to like keep uh, your hands clean and you're pressed for time, this definitely is the way to go. Look at that. And that definitely takes time to kind of just uh, put a bag on everything and uh, you know price it and get it in the bin like that but everything had a, a little well mostly everything had a little baggy but first time I seen that pretty cool but let's go ahead and make our way down to the modern or I don't I, I guess this is a little bit of a mix with modern and retro this display case this is just right across the cashier and then down below we got a PSP, the uh, 3000 model, nice blue for 7000 and that PS Vita there for 10,000 yen. And we got this little Mario, this was a little Club Nintendo thingy majig. And then I do like how they have all these little uh, figurines just kind of merchandised around the uh, around the stock. That's a really a neat thing to do. And then here we have some more Nintendo handhelds. It looks like a lot of DS lights, DSIs, mostly what is that? Mostly DSIs, I believe. Coming in at 4,000, 3,000 respectively. And then we have a Game Boy Advance player for 4,500. They had two of them, but I believe both of them do not include the disc. And then here we have some more Nintendo handheld goodness. With pricing a little bit all over the map there. And then we have our Game Boys. Look at that. We got a Pokemon one coming in at 25,000 yen. And then uh, the rest of them seem to be pockets. And then we have the one Game Boy Advance. And the, the prices on the pockets there are not too bad. All of them are coming in at around 4,000 it seems. And definitely tempting. Here we have the, the, the GBA for 12,000 yen. And then we have the Micro for 20,000. Oh, that Micro looks pretty cool. And then we have the, the old school Game Boy Advances at 7,000 each. And those look like they're in pretty good condition. And then we got the top, the top loader, the AV Famicom for 7,000 yen next to some Nintendo Switches. Look at that, uh, 23,000, 20,000, and 17,000 for the light model. And then up above that, we got a PS3 for 20,000, and this is fully backwards compatible there, and it is working. And then we have a couple of Slims, pretty nice color there, and then we got the Switch uh, Pokemon, uh, what is that, Let's Go Pokemon Edition for 25,000 yen, and then a, a Genesis uh, Mini for 25,000 yen, just kind of hiding, chilling in the back. And then an assortment of PS4s. We got the Slim, the OG, the Pro. Only thing that's missing is the PS5. And then up above, it gets even better with the, with the whole merchandising. Look at that. That's so cool. I do like seeing uh, when they put in the effort there. And then here we have, uh, I guess, uh, your 3DS, DS titles. Not really going to show too much here, but I will show one title. Keep your eyes peeled because sometimes you will run across North American editions of the game. This is 2,000 yen. I'm not really sure what it's going for in North America, but seems uh, pretty cool to see that one. And then here we have Golden Axe 3, Gunstar Heroes, Bare Knuckle 2, a Golden Axe 2, for, with the Golden Axe 3 coming in at 20,000 yen. My goodness. And then here we have the SG-1000 and the Mark III both coming in at 15,000 yen. So they do have some Sega hardware. Pretty old school hardware there. And then we have the PS2 version of the Sega Superstars. And this is compatible with the iToy. And that one's coming in at 2,000 yen. 
And then in the back, we have Metroid Other M for 10,000 yen. When the heck did that one go up in price? My goodness. And then we have Tatsunoko versus Capcom. This is the All-Stars Battle Edition for 10,000 yen. Now, Japan did get a vanilla release, and that vanilla release doesn't have the extra characters, but it is a lot less expensive. And then here we have a couple of 360 titles with the one on the right for 12,000 yen. I wonder if that's a shooter. And then the maracas, those are everywhere. And then the power glove for 8,000 yen. Look at that. And this thing looks pretty clean. I mean, look at the styrofoam. It's not even dirty or anything. 8,000 yen. Not too bad there. Well, what do we have here? Some Xbox action, some joysticks. What else do we have? And then down below, we have a Jocon. Look at this. For 1,000 500 yen it is in the box definitely the lowest that i've ever seen this bad boy this was pretty tempting but you know i already have the neck con so i don't really have a need for the jock con we got a we got some uh, a pair of game cubes for six thousand yen each not too bad and then down below we got the sg 1000 complete in the box for thirty thousand yen now the other sg 1000 was a mark ii this is the original one and then we have a, quite a bit of Wii's down below. Some Super Famicoms. The original Famicom for 7,000 and 8,000 respectively. I'll pull one out. And as you can see, not too bad of condition there. And then we're going to make our way through the little N64. The little, uh, quite, a, quite a few of them actually. That gold one for 10,000 has two controllers. And then this fantastic one also has two controllers for 10,000 yen. We got a Mega Drive 2 for 9,000. So a little bit of more Sega hardware. We got a PC engine. What is that? The core graphics for 13,000. We got a Game Boy player there with the disc. And this bad boy, look at this. The Laser Active Pioneer PC engine controller for 12,000 yen. That's definitely exotic. And if I had the money to blow, I probably would have picked that up. What do we have here? We got the Pocket Pikachu. And that one's coming in at 7,000. Now this PlayStation 2 controller, I have seen that I have seen that before, but this is the first time seeing it in this color. And I believe it also comes in black and in white with the black one being the one that I usually uh, run into in the wild. We got a, a number of PS Vitas and PSPs. And then look at this, some more of this cool merchandising, just kind of Spidey chilling with a skeleton, the Evangelion, uh, robot thing i really don't know much about that series but we got a joystick and then this controller here for the dreamcast now this is pink so this could be hello kitty action here coming in at 5,000 yen what do y'all think about that it's kind of mean looking and that's not the only controller they had this pikachu n64 for 3,000 yen and it also looks like it's in pretty good condition but guys that's pretty much going to be it for today's episode i hope you enjoyed this one we definitely have more on the way and you know just stay tuned and i'll be dropping it uh, hopefully sooner than later ciao